According to Ninja, AI search is here and it's happening now. So maybe you've been watching the Exposure Ninja videos and having a bit of a dabble to yourself. You may even be working with Exposure Ninja and we might be doing stuff like this for you. ChatGPT, oh ChatGPT, who are the best AI search optimization agencies? Yep. 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 But how do you know if you're winning? In SEO, you can track rankings. You can see if your position won or you've got a featured snippet. In paid ads, we get a nice dashboard where we can see how much we've spent and how many clicks we've got and how many conversions we've got. But with ChatGPT, it's just a black box. We don't know what's going on in there. This might seem like a first world problem, but actually it's really important because metrics are so key to digital marketing. The whole reason that digital marketing is so popular is because there's a very fast and obvious feedback loop. We make an action, we get a result. We can see that result. Result. we can track it so we then do more of that action if you've got ads over here that are performing really well you put more budget into them when you write new content on your website you see that content rising up in the organic rankings on google so you do more of that thing but there's no search console for perplexity google's not going to tell you how to win in ai mode so today we're going to solve this problem and show you how to track your results in ai search optimization and how to use those results to then reverse engineer a strategy to win Okay, broadly speaking, metrics in AI search optimization fall into two categories. We have visibility. So this is how often you are showing up in the AI search results, whether on ChatGPT or Google's AI overviews, and sentiment, or whether the stuff that they're saying about you is nice. There are different versions of these, which we're going to go through in a bit more detail. And there are two ways to measure this. The first way is what I call the crazy way. This is to do everything manually. So go to Google search results, type in whatever prompt you want, see if you're being referenced in the AI overviews or in AI mode, and then record that in a spreadsheet somewhere. You'll then need to do this for Perplexity and ChatGPT and whichever other platform that you want. Ideally, you'd also be tracking your competitors' visibility for all of these queries as well. You're going to need to do this multiple times per day, and pretty soon you're going to see that you won't have time for any other hobbies because this will become your new obsession. The most effective way to do this is to use one of the emerging crop of AI search visibility tools. These basically run those searches for you in the background and take out lots of the data about what they're finding, not just tracking your visibility and sentiment, but also your competitors. In today's demo, I'm going to be using Peak AI because it has this capability. Full disclosure, I know the founders of Peak AI and have been using this tool for months. They also offered to sponsor this video, but it doesn't influence what we're going to be talking about today. So today we're going to be using Peak AI and we've set it up to track HubSpot. So we're going to play a little game where we pretend to be in HubSpot's marketing team and go through all of the exercises we're going to look at today. Quick explanation about how tools like Peak work. They open with this dashboard here, but really things start with the prompts that you choose. And these are like the search terms that you want to track your visibility for. Now you need to choose these up front and you want to make sure that they're meaningful to your brand. Typically, there are a few different categories of prompts that you'll want to track. Firstly, prompts that are going to be used by your target audience. So let's say that HubSpot was prioritizing marketing agencies as a user. Well, here's best CRM software for a marketing agency. So that's a type of audience-based prompt. Another category of prompts are ones that emphasize certain features which you think are core to your product or service. For example, best CRM with built-in AI capabilities. Let's say that HubSpot really wanted to position itself as an AI integrated CRM. That's the type of prompt that they'd want to track so that they can measure how they're doing against competitors. Another category is prompts that cover the problems that you solve. These are the things that you're going to hear from your customers over and over again and that you want to position yourself as a solution to. So for example, for HubSpot, it might be how to automate sales prospecting. If this is something that they consistently hear as a problem from their audience, this might be something that they want to get in front of. Now it's worth saying that these AI tools work differently to Google in that the question people actually ask ChatGPT or Perplexity or AI mode are typically going to be much longer and more complex than these more search focused queries. For example, people probably aren't going to go straight to ChatGPT and just ask software for my sales team. They might ask something like, so I've got my sales team and I don't think they're that productive. I also find that they lose a lot of leads and I'm wondering if there's a way of keeping all of these leads in one place so that I can see how they're progressing. Now ChatGPT's answer might essentially be, hey, you need some software for your sales 
sales team. So clearly defined individual prompts isn't the perfect solution to this problem, but I think it's a really good start. And until there's a way of tracking visibility for every query in a certain topic, this is the best solution that we have. One of the things I like about Peak is once you put in some prompts, it also suggests alternative prompts as well, which you can accept and add into your tracking really easily. Once you have your prompts inside the platform, Peak then goes and runs these queries against each of the individual AI tools. And you can see all of the AI tools that you have at your disposal here. You can choose your top three priorities. So we've chosen ChatGPT, Perplexity and AI overviews. And then depending on your account level, you can add in more if you need. And when these tools like Peak run these prompts, through the different AI tools, they record when you show up, how often you show up, the sentiment behind your feature. And they do all of this for your competitors as well. And they record this over time so you can see how your visibility is progressing. Okay, let's look at these two areas, visibility and then sentiment. Then we're gonna look at how to improve our scores in each of these areas. Let's start with visibility. So in the dashboard area here, we can see that Peak has given HubSpot and its top competitors a visibility score. This is a percentage score. Obviously, the higher your percent, the better. So a score of 83% means that HubSpot is showing up in 83% of the responses to the prompts across all of the AI models that we're tracking. Got it? If that sounds like a pretty good score, it is. That's a really good score. We can also see average position. So in this case, position 1.7. When an AI model gives an answer to a question like best CRM with built-in AI capabilities, it recommends products. We can see here HubSpot is in position two because it's the second product that's being recommended. So across all of the prompts and across all of the AI models that it's tracking, HubSpot's average position is 1.7. Again, that is really good. Now your scores probably won't be this good unless you've been really selective with your prompts. So we are gonna look at how to improve your scores to get to sort of HubSpot's level later on. You can also see these sentiment scores, which we're gonna to touch on in a minute. So that's our overall visibility and position, but you can go into more detail here on the prompt screen. You can see the visibility score for each individual prompt and the position for each individual prompt as well. You can go a level further and choose different models to see how your visibility and position varies according to the AI model. You might notice from this that HubSpot actually isn't doing as well in ChatGPT as it is in some of the other models. We're gonna come back to exactly why that's happening when we look at sources in just a minute. Just like most SEO tools, you can click on a prompt to see performance for that prompt over time. No, I should say, there's a lot of volatility here. Look at Insightly on the 30th of July, it had 100% visibility for this prompt in AI overviews. The next day, 0%. Arr! Don't panic, this is not ranking falling off a cliff. These AI models work differently to traditional search because they are not deterministic. They are coming up with a new response to these prompts every time. So you will notice that your visibility jumps around a lot. What we're really looking for is to collect lots of data across lots of prompts over a long time period. And then we can see general trends trends and movement. Don't panic just because today your visibility is 0% and yesterday it was 100%. You haven't just broken the internet. How having said that, when you look at all of this data, some patterns definitely start to emerge. You can see the top performing sites with their little favicons here and you can see HubSpot's doing super well. Whereas if we choose some of the others like say Clavio, it's really not doing super well at all. Lower visibility, lower position and very rarely it's one of the top brands being referred to in the answer. Again, we are going to talk about how to fix this at the end of the video. First though, there is another type of visibility. As well as having your brand recommended, you can also have your content cited as a source. If we head over to the sources tab, we'll see how this works. And this is really important because if your content is being cited as a source, firstly, you might get some link clicks from people clicking on the link in the AI answer to find out more information. And secondly, if your content is being cited as a source, then you have a chance to influence the AI answer to recommend your brand more favorably. I'm just saying it how it is. In this sources tab, we can see that HubSpot's doing pretty well here. Its content is being cited in 18% of searches. That might not seem like a lot, but remember not all of these answers are gonna be citing sources. So this is actually a pretty good score. We can also see it's being cited on average 1.9 times per response. Now looking at some of the competitors like Pipedrive, Monday or Salesforce, we can see that their content is being cited much less often for these prompts. 
keywords, as well as the domains that are having their content cited. You can also see the top individual URLs that are being cited as well. You can do this either on a sort of a global basis. Um, I've just clicked on URLs here and you can see the top articles that are being referred to across all of the prompts, across all of the models. Or if you go back over to domains, you can click on an individual domain to see the top content from that domain that is being cited. Sentiment is how positively or negatively your brand is referred to in the AI answers. It's really no good being recommended in the best CRM responses if the AI tools are saying, yeah, if you're looking for a great CRM, don't use this one because it sucks and the reviews are terrible. So as well as being recommended, you also need to be attached to some sort of positive sentiment if that AI answer is going to influence someone to go and buy your thing. Now, just like with visibility and position, Peak shows you sentiment at a sort of dashboard level as well as sentiment within individual prompts. So the dashboard shows you sentiment across all of your prompts, across all of your tools. And then if you go into the prompt screen, you can see the sentiment across each prompt and then you can break this down by tool if you want to. Now sentiment is measured differently in each of these AI tracking tools. How Peak does it is giving each answer a score between 0 to 100. Most scores are between 65 and 85 and Peak's guidance, if you've got a score around 85% that's generally positive. If you've got a score around 65 that's generally fairly neutral and if you've got a score much lower than 65 generally the language around your brand is negative negative or critical. All right, let's see how this works in practice. We can see HubSpot's doing pretty well with a sentiment score of 87 around marketing agency type terms, which makes sense because HubSpot is a pretty good tool for a marketing agency. Our marketing agency uses HubSpot because it's a pretty good tool. It does less well about most affordable and best free plan queries, which makes sense because HubSpot's bizarrely expensive and the free plan isn't that useful. <laughs> what you'll typically find is some of the AI models are a little bit more critical than others. So if we have a look at ChatGPT, for example, ChatGPT is generally a bit more critical or neutral of HubSpot than maybe Google AI overviews. I would say though that you want to take sentiment scores with a pinch of salt. They are an indication rather than anything massively scientific. If you want to see where that score has come from, you can click through to an individual conversation like this one and you can see how the tool has assigned sentiment scores to individual mentions. So platforms like HubSpot help streamline these tasks allowing your sales team to focus on closing deals rather than manual prospecting. So that is a positive sentiment statement and Peak has assigned it a score of 85. Okay, Tim, we can use tools like Peak to see how well or badly that we're doing, but how do we actually do better? Let's say we've got scores that we don't really like. How can we improve them? Well, the first way to improve is to use the best AI search optimization agency. Who am I to argue? And if you're interested in working with Exposure Ninja, you can request a free digital marketing review where we'll take a look at how your visibility in these tools compares to some of your competitors. We'll analyze your digital marketing strategy as a whole and prioritize you a six to 12 month game plan that you can follow to increase your visibility, and generate more leads on sales online. We'll record this as a video which we send you. It's completely free of charge. This is unbelievable and people who get these absolutely love them but not everybody is eligible so you do need to apply for this at exposureninja.com forward slash review now this is a big statement but with where all of this stuff is going requesting your marketing review from exposure ninja might be the most important thing that you do for your digital marketing this year what the specialists at exposure ninja do is use tools like peak to reverse engineer the necessary strategy to help you win. So let's see exactly how we do that. We're gonna do an example together. Now we could use HubSpot, but to be honest, they are winning. So let's make our challenge a little bit more difficult. Let's expand this and go for the lowest performer, which is Clavio. Now I've got to say, Clavio is only the lowest performer for these prompts. These prompts might not be a strategic priority for Clavio, so I have to say that first. But this is just an example, so let's use Clavio. And let's say that we want wanted to increase Clavio's visibility and sentiment across these prompts. How would we do that? Let's start with visibility and remember that there's two types of visibility. We can either have your brand mentioned in the AI response or we can have your content cited as a source. Let's start with the mentions. We're going to go back into our prompts and we're going to choose Clavio. Now I'm going to select perplexity because as you can see Clavio is being absolutely 
hammered here, only visible for one of these prompts. So what is going on? And again, just a caveat, this is only assuming that these prompts would be a strategic priority for Clavio, which to be fair, they probably wouldn't. But again, we're just using this as an example. To correct this issue, we need to understand the sources that Perplexity is using to come up with its answers. So if we head over to the sources tab and we've got Perplexity here, we can see the websites that Perplexity is most often deriving its records recommendations from Zapier, Omnisend, blah, 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 blah. We can click on any of these domains to show the individual URLs that Perplexity is using, or we can see the top URLs across all of these domains and all of these prompts. This list then becomes our list of targets to get Clavio featured in and ideally with positive sentiment. Some of these are going to be easier to get Clavio featured on than others. So Zapier, Clavio and Zapier probably already have some sort of relationship. So this might just be a case of asking asking Zapier to include a recommendation for Clavia in some of these pieces of content. Others are going to be much more difficult to get mentions on, for example, Pipedrive. It's unlikely that Pipedrive is ever going to feature Clavio and recommend it because they're kind of competitors. Of course, though, we also want Clavio's own website listed in here, because if we can get Clavio's content showing up for these prompts in perplexity, we've got a chance of influencing the answers that perplexity produces. So the next step from this is to look at the types of content Perplexity is citing and start producing this type of content on Clavio's own website. We also want to make sure that that content is written and formatted in the type of way that these AI tools like to cite. And we've got other videos about exactly how to do that. What we can see from this though is that a lot of the content that Perplexity is citing in its responses is these best CRM type articles, best CRM software for small business, best CRM software for small business in 2025. Top five CRM software for 2025. We can see the types of topics that Perplexity is citing. So we would then go and produce some of those types of articles on the Clavio website. Once we've written all of this content covering all of these different topics, we then want to build links to it and get it ranking in regular search. Because remember that all of these AI tools like ChatGPT or Google's AI overviews or Perplexity, they are running a web search in the background. They're Googling the answer or they're using one of the other search indexes to find this content. So we need to have that content published on our website, but we also need that content to be ranking in search. We need to do SEO if we've got a chance at winning this game. The same applies if we want to influence sentiment. We not only want to be featured in these articles, we also want to make sure that they're talking about us with positive sentiment so that perplexity in this case can then take that positive sentiment about Clavio and feed it back to the searcher. If we can't make that happen, if we can't get featured in these articles and we can't get positive sentiment, we need to make sure that other articles featuring Clavio with positive sentiment are ranking and being cited here. So this might be partnerships, this might be digital PR, this might be going out to some of the publications that are already writing about this topic and asking if we can collaborate on next year's article, for example. Sometimes UGC or user-generated content sites are often cited. For example, in Google's AI overviews here, you'll see that YouTube is often cited as a source. And this is fairly typical for AI overviews. Other user generated content sites appearing in top domains include LinkedIn and Reddit. Now, it can be a bit easier to get your brand products or services mentioned on user-generated content sites. Obviously, you need to be in those conversations. You need to make sure that you're responding to people and that when people are asking about your product or service, you're answering those questions, knowing that these AI tools are scraping and looking for information on sites like Reddit and YouTube. Looking at YouTube in particular here, if you click on the URL, you'll see all of the top sources of AI overviews answers. And you can click on the little eye icon to see exactly where that's coming from. Now, in this case, Peak is pulling the description rather than the transcript from the video. That doesn't necessarily mean that's what Google AI overviews is doing. But what this does allow you to do is see the different creators on YouTube that are being cited in the AI overviews answers. So you might then want to go and reach out to Stuart Gold and say, hey, when it's time to produce your 2025 video, maybe we could collaborate on that. Maybe we could sponsor it. Knowing that 
if that video is a success, it might be pulling through into AI overviews and your brand might get recommended as a result. So your game plan here and with AI search optimization in general is to have your brand seeded in all of the places that these AI tools are looking when they're hunting for recommendations to pass on to the searcher. This is the AI optimization game of the next era, however long it lasts, whether it's five years, 10 years or longer. But as you can see, to win in AI search, SEO is just the starting point. The winners in this new era of AI search optimization are going to be using tools like Peak to reverse engineer their markets and find the paths to win, doing things like improving sentiment, position and visibility using the strategies that we've looked at today. Hope you found this useful. If you have, don't forget to request a marketing review from the team at Exposure Ninja. Just go to ExposureNinja.com forward slash review and I'll see you next time.